Alrighty, folks. I'm back over here at the canyon job, but I'm not going to be talking about hauling material. What I'm going to be talking about today is teaching a young horse to pony another horse, lead a pack horse. Blaze has never uh, ponied another horse, has never led a pack horse, and uh, it's time he starts. Got him shod yesterday, as you guys seen on the last video. Um, and I'm going to be adding some tips about going into the back country, that sort of thing, um, that are just good common sense things to do. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get on him. Uh, he's a little bit bronchy. It's a real good idea if you're going to lead something, um, particularly on a green horse. If you can do it in a controlled environment, uh, it's better, but I don't have a controlled environment. All I've got is this place. Uh, I'm going to get on him, make sure he's calmed down, make sure he ain't got no uh, goosey spots. And then I'll come and get a uh, cowboy and uh, get him and we'll take the first load down. Blaze is a reactive horse. Um, he hasn't been ridden that much. Um, most of the riding we've done with him has just been schooling type riding. A um, couple of short trail rides nothing uh where he's really gained some experience and there's been times when i've got on him uh where he has bucked and reared and jumped around and just getting on him without the pack horse uh is just a really good idea that way if he wants to act up he can um he's he's kind of reactive uh even to the bridle and he's real quick to respond so you have to be really easy on him but uh, he's just a real fast animated horse uh, which some folks are, are really not used to most tennessee walkers um, are that way uh, it just takes time and training and just being consistent with them to kind of calm them down and and he doesn't have enough miles on him um, he really he really needs a lot more miles gets charged up real easy but that's why we take them out and and we ride them uh, and get some experience on them so that they do learn to kind of calm down and kind of get with the program okay First thing I want to talk about is, is my setup on my horse. I've got a lead rope so that I can tie my horse up when I get to wherever I'm going so I can unload my pack horse. Um, I've got a set of hobbles on him in case I need to hobble him, in case there's not a really good place down in the canyon uh, to tie them up. Sometimes they're just brush. Um, and it's just a good thing to carry hobbles with you wherever you go. Uh, the next thing I've I've got a really good stout roping saddle um, that I can dally off to. Got a breast collar so that I can pull my other horse if I need to. Uh, if he gets stuck, don't want to go, I can pull on him. So breast collar is real good. Some of these walking horses don't have a whole lot of barrel, so the saddle can slide back. Um, I've got a set of sorry, I'm out of breath. <clears throat> uh, I've got a set of rope reins. Um, when I'm packing, most of the time I like I, li I like roping reins because they're connected. Uh, I can drape them. Uh, I've always got a lead rope on my horse, so uh, I'm not ever losing my reins or, or losing one rein. I've always got them right there where I need them. Buddy. So this horse, he's he's kind of he wants to go. He's ready to go. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different story when I get a hold of, of cowboy. But uh, I've got a few more things I'm gonna put on him, and then we're gonna head out. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about a vest. Um, if you have saddlebags, that's good. I got a whole lot going on with this young horse, and I really don't want to overcomplicate things for him. I don't have saddlebags on him. I've got a vest in my vest. I have my cell phone. Um, I always let somebody know where I'm going. Today I'm out here by myself. Miss Polly has went to New Mexico to see our son. 
um but that's three hours away so i called my good buddy larry i said hey i'm over here at this location uh, i'm gonna be packing in materials i'm on horseback um this is what time i am planning on leaving um you know give them the particulars so that if you're knocked out back there and it's midnight <laughs> somebody knows to come looking for you um really good idea tell people the particulars tell when you're planning on leaving uh if possible if you go past that give them an update call them say hey i'm still over here nothing bad's happened to me uh it's just a good thing to do i've got a multi-tool in here uh, i always carry a multi-tool uh either on my person or on my horse uh, really good pair of pliers knife that sort of thing i have an extra bottle of water which works out really good um, in case i get thirsty before i get back up here i'm looking at making about six trips today and by that time the horses should be calmed down i've got my vest on uh for my camera i'm gonna put you guys on there we're gonna head out Alrighty, this is going to look pretty choppy. Uh, we're going over some really rough ground with a lot of rock. And there's a lot of things going on here. I'm managing my pack horse. Oh. And my young horse here is really eyeballing stuff. And it's really hard to convey on video how nervous he is and how tense he is under me. As I've said before, he's never been... Uh, on very many trail rides and on this one he is in the lead uh, with an added pressure of a pack horse behind him so it's a little bit of a little bit of a challenge for him uh, and I'm keeping in mind here my uh, where my pack horse is at where my lead rope is at trying not to get it caught under his tail uh, just some of the things that we covered um, in the previous video uh, I'm keeping in mind trying to do the best job for my horse um, particularly when we first start out I want to try to avoid uh, any kind of wrecks so uh, this is a really rough area here and this young horse is is doing really well I was really proud of him how he handled these rocks and and handled the pressure of finding his footing and uh, he never stumbled once with me he never uh, took and failed with me uh, just did a really good job really super proud of this of this green horse I believe I see our where we did some cutting down here so we're pretty close to the bottom I'm gonna stop and rest right here that was pretty rough I'm down here where I need to unload this and uh okay boy I gotta be real careful when I go to get off so I only want to have one rein and I want to make sure my lead ropes in front of me and swing off That was some rough country guys this is some rough country i had to come in a roundabout way to get here but first load down now one of the things you'll notice here my, my pack horse wants to get ahead of me get back so i've got my reins and my lead rope across my horse's neck and i do that on purpose I'm gonna try a different route. See if we can't establish a good route up through here. But if I need to, I can reach over here and I can dally my I can dally my pack horse. Um, this horse here, he don't he don't exactly uh, neck rein yet. You can't ride him with one hand. So having the reins like this right here really helps me i can reach over here and 
grab and dally and i've still got control of my pack horse with my with my left hand so we'll try a different route through these rocks hopefully i can find it next time you really got to be watching these young horses they get spooked at things you just wouldn't think they'd get spooked at so this malapai is rough stuff that's why i shot them you can't work a horse in here if they're they're not shod so we'll see if i can't find a route through here it's just kind of a tough maybe over this way tough country you really got to be careful on these rocks that's how I, I use my hands on a young horse maybe ain't got as good a handle on them as they need i'll just throw the, ro the rope com completely over and it kind of tells me how far behind my pack horse is without actually looking back to see my pack horse so. another good tip um when you're in the back country or going out in the back country whether you're hiking or taking a horse <laughs> is if you take your keys make sure you leave an extra one in a place where you could tell somebody where they're at you never know where you're going to end up when you're in the back country you might need to call somebody they might need to get in your vehicle um it's a really good idea to hide an extra key on your car when you're in the back country um i i generally take one with me and then we'll hide one somewhere that way uh if i happen to lose it a lot of things can happen in the back country i know where there's one at uh when i get back to the truck one of the things i do with young horse i don't unless i have to i don't get on the horse holding the holding the uh, pack horse i will take and tie the pack horse up and generally my pack horses are fairly broke so i'll reach over and hopefully by that time my horse is a little bit better but i'll take and i'll just tie them up ride over and get the pack horse that way if my young horse has an issue with me getting on wants to dance around or whatever i'm not getting tangled up with my pack horse and i'm not um i'm not uh, gonna have a wreck or get a horse loose way somewhere in the back country so um we are on a a pretty good sized chunk of ground here but there's no back fence and if these horses was get loose in here and i had to chase them we'd be here for three days so not a good not a good thing so i try to take every precaution i can not to lose a horse up here One of the things I wanted to talk to you about is rain management and lead rope management. Um, and sometimes your pack horse gets off balance, needs to wait a minute, needs to take a little bit of time. And you really have to pay attention to your hands when they're pulling on you and really see what they need. Are they, are they just being balky or are they truly needing to slow down, work around an obstacle or something? So if I need to, I can let my rein out to give that pack horse a little bit of time. I can always take it back up, just like I do my reins as I'm riding. So it's really important to pay attention. You don't want to drag your pack horse off their feet. Like right there, I had to let him, he was working around a rock and I paid close enough attention to my surroundings that I know as I went by that rock, I knew he'd have to work around it. So I just gave him a little bit of lead rope there and it let him work around it. So being, being aware all the time is really key and it'll really save your pack horse and it'll save your, your riding horse also. So back down to the bottom again knowing what your horses can handle is really key these guys here they are 
um, green. They're soft. Um, I said I was going to make five or six trips, but if I can't, I can't. Um, it all depends upon my horses. Right now, they're getting a break when I load up. They're getting a break uh, when, I, when I stop to unload the packs. Cowboy's getting a little bit of a break, but knowing what your horse can handle is really key to not exhausting your horse or getting your horse hurt. It's just like any athlete, uh, if they get tired, blood flow gets hard, uh, strained, oxygen levels get strained, then injuries occur. So we've got to be real careful about how hard we push them. But uh, so far they're doing they're doing okay. Uh, we'll see how many trips we can get. Um, I have six trips to make. That doesn't mean I'll get to make them all today. So we'll see. You don't think walking in this stuff is hard. I keep telling people this is rough country, but some people, I don't know if they believe me or not. <laughs> not a level place to just sit and do something old cash is enjoying the, the day out Anna moved to town and she went with Polly so cash come with me today humbly he's enjoying the freedom just been giving these guys a break while I rig up some posts. I pad the front of the post where they ride on Cowboy's shoulder with blankets there. You can see that. And uh, just letting these guys take a break. It's hot. I would say it's in the upper 90s right now. <clears throat> and uh, they're gonna be tired. I'm gonna offer them some water and uh, then we're gonna load up and head back for another trip. I may hang around here, kick back a little bit and uh, wait for the weather to cool off just a little bit and then make a couple more trips. Taking care of your stocks, number one. They take care of you, you take care of them. Walking a scary load by your saddle horse, the one you're gonna be ponying with is another really good idea. Um, these things have a tendency to run into a horse and uh, just so he's not oblivious to it, we'll walk it by him here several times just so he sees it. Maybe he won't be as scared of it. He's a little nervous about these posts and everything here. I don't blame him. Oh. This may be the wreck right here. You try not to have wrecks, but that don't mean you won't have them. Hopefully they're not bad wrecks. <laughs> Oh. He got a little bit of I'm gonna let my pack horse have a little bit more rain than I would just so he stays off this other horse. Shh. I'm gonna do my best to keep him off this other horse. Them things bump into my horse, he's liable to Pay a little bit more attention here to my pack horse. I don't want him. Running into my horse with his load.
having to ride more with one hand gonna be all over the place here for a little bit Trying to keep that pack horse off of my horse. Really gonna have to be careful here, buddy. Here we go. I'm riding more one hand. I'm keeping my pack horse. You can see how much rain I have. Keeping my pack horse way off of my, my riding horse. That way I can keep him from running those posts into his butt, causing big wreck. I don't believe in training a horse to do a job. I believe in doing a job and training a horse. And I mean, you prepare them with concepts and foundation but when it comes to it you just got to do the job and that's what it's all about doing the job we're down here on the fence line i got 20 posts so i'm gonna drop these i'm gonna drop these uh posts at about 10 out so i can go 10 direction one way and 10 direction another way I always try to position my pack horse on the other side and my horse downhill. That way I don't have a big long way to step while I'm managing my pack horse. Now we're headed back up. Rough country, I tell the world, it's rough. This may be my last load. My horses are pretty tired and I'm pretty sure they're sore. This rock is just, just rough and we'll bring them again another day and haul the remaining down here and set post too so I can only work at the capacity of my horses and them being green it's just a soft it's just hard to take and work them all day long so I'm gonna take get back up here to the top of the hill and get them loaded and we're gonna head home. Alrighty, folks. We are done for the day. Um, Blaze is pretty tired. Cowboy is really tired. He he pulled three trips. All I've ever done with him is about three loads, and he gets he gets pretty tired. He he's not a real big horse, but uh, he he knows his job well and does his job well. I'm going to pack it up, take these boys home. I hope y'all found uh, this video interesting. Um, if you're interested in packing on horses, uh, getting another horse to, uh, to pony, this is the first step in roping. Um, we pony horses before we rope off of them, or we'll pony off of them. And they just learn how to pull, and they learn how to, that they feel tension on them. And like I said before, I don't believe in training a horse to do a job. I believe in doing a job and training a horse. Um, not to say we don't put a foundation on them and, and teach them a thing or two, but uh, I believe just getting them out there and using them, I believe that is the biggest problem with horses today. They're overfed and underworked. So these guys here are earning their keep. Uh, there's no other way you can get this in here except for package yourself. Maybe when I was 16 or 17, I would have undertook that, but not today. So, until next time, be not weary and well doing, for in due season you shall reap.
faint not. We'll see you later.